I get to teach alongside some amazing teachers. Some of these teachers go above and beyond to create experiences that their students will never forget. One of these experiences was recreating the colonial times. I was asked if I could help them make some wooden muskets for the unit. I did. I posted them online and someone in Texas saw them and asked if I could make them two 10-foot rifles for the restaurant. The 10-footers were too expensive to ship, but we found out that 8-footers could ship pretty cheaply. I used my projector to project an image onto some 2x12s and I traced it out with Sharpie. After that I dug into the lumber with, of course, my jigsaw. I was using the wrong size blade for my jigsaw. I ended up breaking one in half. By the time I finished cutting this one out completely, I realized how my inadequate blade choice affected the entire thing. Using that small blade on the jigsaw really came back to bite me in the butt. All of the cuts were at an angle, so I had to flatten it out. I bought this bit online. It's a flush trim bit, but the bearing was too small. I read the re reviews. I should have been warned. It didn't really work, so I switched to the sanders instead. If you've never seen the next machine that I'm about to use, let me enlighten you. It's called a CNC, which stands for Completely Neato Carving Machine. You basically just think about what you want it to make, it reads your mind, you push a couple buttons, and then it does exactly what you want it to do. You can even turn it on with your voice. Echo. Turn on router. I want that. I learned my lesson on the first one, so I went ahead and got the right size jigsaw blade to cut the second gun out. It made a huge difference and took a lot less sanding to get to the shape that I needed it to be. Once the carvings were done, I took some black spray paint and spray painted all the carvings. This is called a hand plane. It's a cheap one, it's a fun tool, but my blade definitely needs to be sharpened. The direction of the grain is important. I finally figured it out. I started using the plane backwards, it worked better. I don't know if you're supposed to do it this way or not, but it did work. In some areas, the carving was sanded away, so I just had to go back in with a hand chisel, this V-groove works really well for it, to re-carve it and then add some more spray paint. That's not cool.
Since these rifles would be outside, I've researched what the strongest outdoor finish is. I ran into Izzy Swan talking about using spar varnish, doing a 50-50 mixture with paint thinner for your first coat. This helps it to really soak into the wood and keeps it from cracking later on from UV rays or anything like that. So the first coat is thinned down, you paint that on there, let it dry, and then later you'll come back in with some 4 aught steel wool. Just to rough up the surface for the second coat to have something to grab onto. For a moment, I want to just stop the music. I want you to think about watching a video without any kind of background music. Just the sounds of me rubbing still wool on a piece of wood. Well, if you're into ASMR and that kind of stuff, maybe you'd like it. While I wait for the spar varnish to cure on the rifles, I keep the paintbrush inside of a plastic bag to keep it from curing so that I can use it for the second coat. All the music that you've heard in my video today have all been the product of some fellow makers. These guys have decided to start a website called Ampletunes.com. They're giving away music for free to other makers. Now you can support them on Patreon if you're willing to. I decided to and I think it'll be well worth it to at least let them know that they are appreciated.